Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem solving questions with brain power. Sounds like kind of what we're doing today. But actually, we're going to be doing the opposite because yesterday's problem, actually, I went so in depth into that problem that today's problem is actually pretty trivial in comparison. And I'll show you why. If you watched yesterday's video, you'll probably realize the same thing. But here we are given a list of questions where each question is a pair of values. One is how many points we gain from that question. And the second is the brain power we have to exert to solve that question. Now, the rest of the problem is so damn confusing the way that they worded it, to be honest. It took me a while to realize what exactly they were asking. This is kind of the most important sentence down here. Basically, we are allowed for every single question to either choose that question or skip that question. What does that sound like to you? It sounds like backtracking or maybe depth first search right a brute force solution and maybe just maybe we'll be able to optimize this using dynamic programming either recursively or just like the tabulation solution but what exactly are they even asking us let's say this is our list of questions we are starting at the first question if we decide to skip that question which definitely is a valid choice then we're just going to move on to the next question and continue to make choices either include this guy or skip it but what happens if we decide to actually solve this question as in we include this well basically we gain the first integer the first integer is the number of points so our total number of points is going to be three at that point there is a catch there is a downside here and they say it right here you will be unable to solve each of the next this many questions by this variable i thought they meant like we're not allowed to solve the questions that have like another a brain power value of two but that's not what they mean they mean we are not allowed to solve the next two questions because this number here is two we have to skip the next two questions we skip this guy and we skip this guy and then we go over here so let's say our index I was over here initially at zero and we decided to include this question. Then we have to skip the next two questions. So what do we do with our pointer I? Do we add two to it? At that point, it would be equal to two. That's not correct because at that point, it would be over here. That's not exactly what we're looking for. We're looking to move it one further than that. We want to skip two questions. So what we would do to our pointer I is say plus one and plus the two value that we get from over here. So then our pointer would be equal to three and we would be at this position. Now, if we did not decide to include this question, our current total score would still be equal to zero, but we would have just taken our I pointer and shifted it by one to be over here. So that is actually pretty much all you need to understand to get to the brute force recursive solution. Very quickly, if you want to visualize the decision tree, it would look something like this, where our I pointer is initially at zero. We decide to include this guy in which case our i pointer would then be at three if we decide to skip it our i pointer would be equal to one and of course we would have to maintain like our current score at each of these uh, points but this is kind of how the decision tree is going to go we're going to enumerate all possible ways that we could solve these questions and then what we are ultimately trying to determine what the problem is asking for is what's the maximum number of points that we could possibly achieve given these rules. Now, one thing you're going to find is since we only have to keep track of one variable, what we're going to see is that sometimes we do get repeated work. Like here, if we decide over here to skip, we might get like a plus three, a plus one, which would put this something at like I equals five. But if we decide to uh, skip this, then we would get maybe over here to I equals two. The point that I'm making is maybe here, we're going to get to I equals three. And sometimes we're going to notice that the sub problems end up repeating. We don't want to have to solve the same sub problem twice. So we're going to implement a DP uh, technique called caching to eliminate the repeated work. So each of these sub problems will only need to be solved a single time. And how many sub problems are there? Well, our pointer I might end up being at every single position in the input array, which let's say the length of it is N. So therefore the time complexity is going to be big O of N. And lastly, from the root of our decision tree, once we have this sub problem solved, 
and this sub problem solved. These are kind of the two main sub problems. We're going to take the maximum of the return value of both of these recursive calls, and that's going to be our result because that's what we're trying to determine. Remember the maximum number of points that we could earn. So knowing that, let's code it up. So remember, we're going to solve this recursively. So I'm going to create another function defined inside of our outer function because then I don't really have to pass in this list of questions each time. We can only worry about like our actual pointer, which is is changing. Now, what about our base case for the recursive function? Well, the main one is going to be if our pointer i goes out of bounds, which might mean it reaches the end of the length of the questions. But remember the way we are making decisions, we might not only be incrementing i by one, we might end up incrementing it by a larger number. So it's actually possible for our i pointer to go way far out of bounds, way further than the last index. Instead of checking this equality, we should check if it's greater than or equal to the length of questions. And if that does happen, if we're out of questions, of course, we can't really gain any more score, so we return zero. Now, what about the recursive call? Well, the simple one is just DFS on I plus one. This is skipping the current question. What if we want to include or rather solve the current question? Well, then we would call DFS. Actually, before we even call DFS, we would have to add to our current score the current question, which is going to be at questions index I and the first value among the pair. So at index zero is going to be the score that we gain from solving that problem. So we're going to take that that score and add it to the result of our new DFS call, which we're not just going to be passing an I plus one. It's not that simple. Remember, we have to pass an I plus one plus the number of questions that we now have to skip, which is going to be questions index I at index one. Remember, the second value is the one that tells us how many questions we have to skip. So we have it just like that. So these are the two values that we actually care about. And what we want to do with both of them is just find the maximum. So I'm going to do it just like this. There are probably more readable ways to write this, but I kind of prefer writing it like this. Don't forget the comma over here because we're passing these two values into max as parameters. And we're going to then store the result in our DP cache, which now I should probably start talking about because we've pretty much solved this problem in a brute force way, but now we have to add caching to it to make it more efficient, which we can do by creating a hash map. That's what I usually like to do, but you could also use a one dimensional array in this case. And we're going to store the result in the hash map using the index I as the key. And then after we've computed that, we can go ahead and return it. It's important though that you make sure to store it in the cache because here as another base case, we want to know before we actually start making additional recursive calls, if we've already solved this sub problem before, which we know if index I is already stored in the DP hash map, then we can just return that pre-computed value. So this is the entire recursive solution with caching implemented or memoization. And the only thing we have to do now is actually call it. We're going to call DFS starting at index zero because they told us we have to start at the beginning of the list of questions and work our way to the right. So let me run this code to make sure that it works. And as you can see, it does. And it's pretty efficient. Now, very quickly, I want to show you the tabulation method for this, even though the time and space complexity is pretty much the same, which for both of the solutions is going to be big O of N for the time and big O of N for the space. Remember, we had a hash map and it was pretty much a one dimensional array, like I said, and we were computing the values in each of these positions. Can you tell me what the value at this position might represent? Well, it's basically the entire problem. The value stored here is the score we can gain, the max score we can gain from all of these questions. Like if we can choose from all of these questions, but we know that to compute this value, we have to solve the sub problem, which is asking the same question for this portion of the array. And then to solve this problem, we have to ask that for this, and then this, and this is pretty much the base case. Because remember, we start at the left and work our way to the right, but we can't predict the future, so we have to try every combination. So this is the basic sub problem. Just solving this question will give us 
two points. So let's put two over here. Now we can kind of solve this sub problem. So at this question, we have a choice. We can solve this problem and gain a score of four. And then if we decide to solve this problem, we have to skip the next four sub problems. So we would say actually the value we're going to store here is going to be four plus whatever value would be four plus one positions ahead. And this four, by the way, is coming from here. Clearly that takes us all the way out of bounds. That's kind of the reason I'm deciding to use a hash map instead of just a one dimensional array. You could use a one dimensional array, but you'll have to have some if statements to check if you go out of bounds. And with a hash map, I'll show you how you can avoid that. That was just one of our choices for this position. If we decided to include this value, what if we decided to skip this value, then we would just take the value at I plus one, which is two in this case. So you tell me which is greater four or two. Well, probably four. So we're going to store four over here and we're just going to keep working our way backwards, solving each sub problem. Now we're over here. We can choose to include this four plus then we have to skip three spaces plus one, but that'll take us out of bounds. So that's one choice, or we could just take the value at I plus one, which is four. So either way, we get a value of four in this position. Now, finally, we get over here. So we have a choice, include three plus whatever value is going to be at index I plus two plus one. So our index here is zero. Our index here is one two, three. This brings us all the way to index three. The value at index three is of course two. So this is one possibility. The value stored here could be three plus two if we include the three value, but we could decide to skip this and just take the value that happens to be stored over here. Well, five looks greater to me than four. So the value we're going to store here is going to be five. And you can see that that happens to be the result for this question. So this is exactly how we're going to code up this solution. Basically, I'm just going to reuse this hash map that we already have here. And I'm going to go through the array in reverse order. So we can do that in Python like this, the length of questions minus one, we're going to be working our way all the way up until the beginning of the array. And we're going to be decrementing each time. If you're not familiar with Python, this looks complicated, but it's actually simpler than you think. We're just iterating our pointer I in reverse order through the range of the length of the questions. And now what we're trying to compute here is what value we should store at DP at index I remember. And we have two choices. We can choose to include the question, which would mean we take the score of the current question, which is at index I and the value at index zero plus whatever value is in our DP hash map at index I plus one plus the offset, which is questions at index I at index one. The problem is that this might give us an index out of bounds error if we're using a one dimensional array with a hash map. It might give us an invalid key error. One way to fix that would be to say collections dot default dict in Python, which will always give us a default value of zero if I pass an int as like the default dict type. But I think it's better to be a bit more explicit. Sometimes I feel like using this is like cheating. So what I do is just have a hash map and I actually instead of indexing this, I say dot get with the same key value, which was I plus one plus questions, index I, index one. But if this value doesn't exist or this key doesn't exist in the hash map, we can return a default value, which we can actually specify. So in this case, a good default value would probably be zero. So that's what I'm going to specify as the default value. So this way we don't have to check. We don't need an if statement to check if this is not a valid key, because if it's not, we'll get zero anyway. And remember, this is the choice. If we include the current question, there's also the choice where we skip or rather I should say solve, but you know, whatever. And skipping is a bit more easy. Remember, we can just say DP dot get at index I plus one. But even if that happens to be out of bounds, let's get a default value of zero. So these are our two cases and we just want to take the maximum of them. Remember, notice we do not have any recursion here. We're just getting the values from the hash map. We're not making recursive calls like we did below. So I'm just going to cut this into our max function and then move the max function function up to the assignment over here. And that's pretty much the entire code. Remember, the result is going to be stored at index zero. So let's return DP of zero and run this to make sure that it works. 
Oops, I forgot the comma. Remember how I told you earlier in the video, don't forget the comma? Well, somehow I didn't take my own advice. So let's run this again. And as you can see, it works and it's pretty efficient. Very quickly, I wanna mention that this is an example of the zero one knapsack problem. This is a dynamic programming pattern. It's pretty common. In the comments, I'll try to link a few more problems that follow this pattern. I've solved quite a few. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. It has a ton of free resources to help you prepare. Thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon.